Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for, for being our God who is not a God who is far away, but you are near and you are here. And so we pray that as we hear your word again, give us the confidence and the faith to believe that you are in control of all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Dear friends of Jesus, our Savior, have you ever felt out of control? A couple of weeks ago, our, a couple of weeks ago, we went to go tubing down the Colorado River. And in order to get to the opening of the river, we were, got on top of the levee where the canal is below us and dirt is on the other side, so it's pretty high up, and we traveled down that levee to get to the opening of the river. My future son-in-law, C-Mac, was driving the car, and all, he was driving down the middle, everything was fine, we all felt safe, and all of a sudden, he starts driving on the right edge of that levee, just inches from the edge. So I'm in the front passenger seat, looking out the window, and thinking that this car could roll, go off and roll at any second. But I didn't say anything, but I was really nervous. All of a sudden, our daughter Rachel, she says, See, Mac, why are you driving so close to the edge? And that's when I said, yeah, it feels like we're going to fall off. And he looked in the mirror and he said, oh, we have 68 feet. We got plenty of room. I disagreed silently because, again, it looked like we were just going to roll off that side. Now, I have to say, I like roller coasters. I like fast rides. There are a lot of things I enjoy, but that was really, really scary to me. Now, we got there and everything was fine. No one was hurt. It was all good. I wanted to take control of the wheel so badly to be in control, but I was just along for the ride. See, we live in a world that just seems to be out of control. People think the world is out of control when there are floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, fires, and war. People think the world's going out of control when food prices are high, when gas prices are high, when the economy continues to, the cost of living continues to increase with no end in sight. And then we look at our world and we continue to see the breakdown of the family. People are confused about their own identity, who God made them to be, and make matters worse, our country is polarized, divided over all these things. It feels like gone are the days when you can think what you think and I can think what I think, and we can still at least have a conversation. Because today, a lot of people are just saying, no, you have to think how I think, and that's it. No wonder people feel like things are getting out of control. Now, the truth is we do live in a world that's been going out of control ever since sin has come into the world. At the very beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, everything was perfect. In fact, everything was very good. Everything worked together for the good of everyone. There were no hurricanes, no tornadoes, no floods. There was no shortage of food. There were no natu short of natural resources. No one thought of each other first. They always thought of others. Last week I said God made the perfect family. Everything was perfect and good. But then the problem is that sin came to the world, world and destroyed everything that God had created. Storms and floods and famines, people only thinking of themselves. And worse yet, people started worshiping creation instead of worshiping the creator. People didn't like the one true God, so what did they do? They made their own God out of wood, stone, metal, all kinds of things. In fact, anytime anybody put something before God, they are making a God of their own making. So people have begun to worship creation instead of the creator, and because of sin, again, it feels like our world is going out of control. Now, the good news in all of this is God has always been in control. Many people don't think so because people believe if God were in control, then there wouldn't be floods or hurricanes and tornadoes. If God was in control, people think that there would be no sickness or cancer. If God was in control, then bad things wouldn't happen to decent people and good things wouldn't happen to bad people. 
If God were in control, then people wouldn't die of starvation, and evil wouldn't be so prevalent in our world. If God were in control, then things would be a lot better. Even though he told Adam and Eve, if you eat from the tree in the middle of the garden, if you sin, then things will never be the same again. I like to look at the situation a little bit differently. I like to say, if God wasn't in control, can you imagine how things would really be? They would be so much worse than they really are. And if God wasn't in control, everything would be completely out of control in a way we could never imagine it. You see, as bad as sin has affected our world and the people who live in it, God continues to hold all things together. There are a lot of people in our world who believe that it's up to us, it's up to humans, it's up to people to hold the world together. That if we live a certain way, if we do certain things, if we're concerned about the environment, so many other things, if we would just do our part, and if we don't do what we should be doing, then everything's going to unravel and the world's going to come falling apart. There are a lot of people who believe it's up to us to hold the world together. Now, that's a big responsibility. Now, I'm not against taking care of our earth and being good stewards because we're supposed to do that. God has given that as our job to do. But we can't hold the world together. We can't keep it from falling apart. That's God's job. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, it tells us this. It says, For by him all things were created. Who's him? Him is Jesus. Someone might say, well, Jesus wasn't born yet. Well, no, he wasn't born in bodily form. Jesus is God. There is only one God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He has always been without beginning, without end. And so Jesus was there at creation. In fact, everything was created by the power of God's word, who is Jesus. And so it says, for by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authority, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So God is going to hold everything together, no matter how good or bad they are, until Jesus comes again. So not only does he hold all things together in our world, but more than that, he changes people's hearts to live for him instead of living selfishly for themselves, all because he is God. And so even though we see things that are changing and even though we, think, we see things that are getting more difficult uh, to, uh, to live with, God, even in the midst of this, is changing people's hearts to live for him. Because he is God and no there is no other. In fact, this is what we read in our text in Isaiah, in, again, in Isaiah chapter 44, verses 6 through 8. Uh, Isaiah chapter 44, it says, This is what the Lord says. Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Very clear. There's only one God. There is no other. And then he throws down the gauntlet. Then who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let him foretell what will come. So if there is another God or gods, let them tell what is to come. And they would wait. And they would wait. And they would wait because they cannot speak. Because they are not a god. And then in verse 8, it says, Do not tremble, do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. You see, there is only one God. And despite what people think, he is in control. So again, the question I have for you this morning is, do you believe that God is completely in control? Or because of your circumstances? 
or because of what you see going on in the world today? Are you struggling a lot like the ancient people did a long time ago? Because God's people, even though they were given great signs and wonders, they still questioned and they doubted that God was in control, especially when they were slaves in Babylon. The pagan deities seemed to have the upper hand on the God of Israel, and the Babylonians were quick to give their gods the credit for the victories and growing power. And because God's people were removed from the temple, they were wondering if God was going to fulfill his promise by sending them a king and giving them an everlasting kingdom. Because of their circumstances around them, they were afraid. Now, never mind the fact they were in Babylon, the fact that they were exiled, be all these bad things were happening to them was because of their sin. Because they went after other gods instead of looking at the one true God. It wasn't that God wasn't in control. God allowed them to be taken into captivity because he warned them that if they strayed, that if they turned away, this is what would happen. And so because of their circumstances, they were afraid. They're afraid that God wasn't in control. What about you? Do you believe that no matter what you go through, God always has a way out? Do you believe that when things get tough and it looks like the bad guys or evil is winning, God continues to keep his promises? You ever struggle that God continues to be in control? I can tell you firsthand that your life can change just like that. One phone call, one text, and all of a sudden, your life has been turned upside down. Thing, something happens, and your life will never be the same again. And there's no turning back. And it feels like life is going out of control. It, for me, it felt like I was in a bubble. It felt like the world was passing by, and things were just getting out of control. For others, it might be that you've gone through something for a very long time. You've been struggling with something for a long time, or maybe you're going through something, and you know it's going to be a very long time. You don't see, you don't have any end in sight for this. It's going to continue to go. And so you might cry out, how long, O Lord, how long must we endure this? Come and rescue us. Come and help us. Because it feels like you're not in control. Now, again, the good news for us this morning is that God is in control, no matter what, because there is only one God and there is none beside him. Yes, we live in a world of problems and challenges because of sin, but it's nothing that God can't handle. Therefore, he says to us in his word, incidentally, his word that never fails us, do not tremble, do not be afraid. And so do you hear what God is saying to you? In the midst of your troubles, don't be afraid. When the evidence around you seems to be saying just the opposite, God says to you, fear not. Don't be afraid of what can't hurt you because I am the whole, only true God. I'm the only true God and I have come down to rescue you. You see, ultimately God came to us in our greatest time of need when we were completely separated from God because of our sin. Ultimately, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to live in order to be the rock on which we stand. And the best part is when, when, when we were unable and unwilling to obey, Jesus went to a rock called Calvary to suffer and die in our place. Sin and Satan and death could not hold Jesus in this carved out rock of a tomb. He burst forth out of that rock and he is alive. He lives and because he lives, he gives life to all who believe. What? idol can do that none but god did because he is god and because he continues to keep us and he continues to keep us on the firm rock of jesus christ jesus who continues to come to us in his word and continues to keep us secure and strong in our faith Jesus, who is the rock of our salvation, who not only gives us life, but also continues to forgive us all our sins and promises everlasting life because God continues to be in control. You see, as a result of what God has done, 
as a result of what God is doing right now in our life and what he will do, we have the great privilege of being his witnesses. As God's people, we have witnessed God's miraculous power in our own lives and the lives of people. We've seen God answer prayer. We've seen God do miracles in people's lives. We've seen God do the greatest miracle in our own lives because there was a time when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, but then he has made us alive in Christ. He has resurrected us to new life. That's a miracle that if you're a believer in Jesus, you have experienced. And so we now have the privilege of sharing this good news, especially in times of uncertainty, that there is someone who is certain and sure. In the next year, we're going to hear a lot of people give promises, make all kinds of promises. Of all those people that are going to make promises, how many are going to keep their promise? Are they just going to say things in order to be elected? But people are going to make all kinds of promises. People do. People make all kinds of promises every single day. We've all made promises that we broke, broke and you see, the truth is there's only one who keeps his promises, and that's Jesus. He's certain and sure. And so we have the privilege of telling others about Jesus who wants nothing more for them to also trust in the one who is rock solid. Therefore, when people are talking about uncertainty, when people are talking about being afraid of the future, when people are wondering what's going to happen tomorrow, when people come to a realization that their false gods have failed them, don't be quiet. Use this as an opportunity to tell them about Jesus. Use this as an opportunity to tell them that they don't have to be afraid. Assure them they don't have to be afraid because there is a God, the only true God, who wants to be the solid place people turn to so that when they are filled with turmoil, by his strength and his power, they will endure to eternal life because God is in control. Again, when your life seems to be going out of control or you're dealing with something for a very long time, remember there is a God, a God who loves you, a God who saves you, a God who is with you, a God who will give you everything you need right now today. And a God who always keeps his promises. And because he keeps his promises, we know without a doubt that there are always better days ahead. To God be the glory. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you are God and you are God who is in control of all things. We know through your word that without a doubt that you are working good in the lives of those who love you. And when things seem to be falling apart or when things seem to be out of control, you're still working and living in us. And so we thank you for that. And Lord, we pray that as we live in this world, help us to be uh, your mouthpiece, your spokes, uh, help us to speak up and let people know that there is hope, there is a great future waiting for them in Jesus. Help us to let people know that we don't have to be afraid, but that we can live in this world confident of your salvation. Lord, thank you for being our God. Thank you for the life that you've given us, and we pray that you'd use us to help share your good news so that more and more people would rely on you alone, the one true God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.